I took the 1.5 minute thing very seriously, although I think I'm going to convert it to Fahrenheit, which gives me a little longer. Um, the first statue of Ben Franklin to appear on the Penn campus was commissioned by the class of 1904. It's located down in front of Waitman Hall, which is next to Franklin Field, and it depicts a young Ben Franklin with his walking stick and satchel as he would have appeared on his way to Philadelphia in, 1970, in 1723 when he was 17. He took a ship from Boston to New York to look for work as a printer, and when he couldn't find work there, he walked to Philadelphia. He found a job there as a printer. Within a year, uh, he went to London to, to buy materials to open his own print shop and then returned to Philadelphia where the rest is history. I cite that statue because Franklin's walk opens a window into an earlier and strikingly different world where climate change was still in the future. And I am not just referring to temperatures. Let me say it again. Franklin walked from New York to Philadelphia. I can't imagine any of the graduates of this year's class will be walking to New York to look for work when they're done. Um, the New Jersey that he walked across was still all field and forest, with a climate that had been stable since the last ice age. The London in which Franklin landed was probably the largest metropolis ever powered by wood, wind, and water. So as we look for models of a low carbon future, we can start with every city from, about, uh, from before about 1840. Of course, after 1840, the explosive growth in population and in city size uh, was driven by coal, and then by gas, and then by, uh, and then by oil. So I take it for granted that we must transition to a low, carb low carbon power as rapidly as possible. We must return in some form to the land that Franklin walked across. So I disagree with those who tell us that we can simply unplug the dirty stuff and plug in the clean. It is the story many of us would like to hear. Um, however, there will be many changes in the way we live. It will require uh, many changes that we can predict now, such as land use change, uh, climate migration, and it will also involve changes we can't yet predict, but which we will have to navigate. Reflecting on 18th century London offers us a valuable point of comparison. Um, we now face many transitions, and the world has, sorry, we now face many transitions, and this highlights how many times the world has already changed in the short life of this country. My grandmother was born in a world without cars, radios, or airplanes, and at the end of her life was flying to London to visit friends. I was born in a world without the internet, uh, without uh, any of the tools that you now take for granted, and yet you're all connected in ways uh, that I can't even begin to imagine. These devices have arguably changed our social and economic lives as much as any technological shift. So my point is, the shift to a low carbon economy is not just a technical project. It's a social, political, and economic one in which we all have to invent new ways of living and working together. What I see, because of who I am, is I see buildings and land use change. But each of you will encounter and must help navigate other aspects of that change together. We will make up this low a carbon economy that comes next. My point is that we've been adapting to radical change since Franklin walked across New Jersey. And we must continue to embrace that pace of radical change even when we're walking. Thank you.